Okay guys, so I know I said I was going to show the crystals play out here, but this match that Kib and I played to test that stuff last night was absolutely ludicrous, and this has to get shown first. I mean, first off, we had an amazing rock, paper, scissors there, <laughs> but we wanted to see if having two Judgment Dragon in, and a revamped Light Swan deck was going to be enough to play against a Glad Beast, because this Glad Beast deck has been absolutely busted as all get out, and... Yeah, we wanted to double check, because right now we have JD limited, because oh my god, the card is insane. But it was actually semi-limited during the time period that we're playing here. So, yeah, I wanted to wanted to see uh, if that would make a difference. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing. So we go first, we've got Rescue Cat over here. This has been errated, so, but it doesn't actually matter here, because we're using it for a Synchro Summon. So we bring this out, we send it to the graveyard, we get two... Beast Monsters, level 3 or lower, to the field. So it's going to be the X Saber Air Bellum. This is the tuner that I generally use for it here. And Test Ape is level 2. These are both Earth Monsters as well, so they synchro into level 5. And being Earth Monsters, you can use this for Nature Air Beast. Stop me if you've seen this before. Uh, I guess it depends how many times you've actually seen my stream stuff, but because uh, we've only had this for one set. Our last set open was Hidden Arsenal 2, that's where this card came in. And then we follow it up with Painful Choice too, because why not? Um, the more we've been testing with stuff, the more we've realized that Naturia Beast is just like absolutely bonkers to get rid of right now. It's bigger than Cyber Dragon, so it's a little bit tricky to, to just like summon over. And it has functionally infinite negates for the spell cards, like by the time you would use them all. Uh, it, yeah, by the time you use all your spell cards of it, you still haven't milled everything in the deck. So this painful choice is going to get rid of the rest, rest of the rescue cats, the other two here. Um, it's going to put the two copies of Bestiari, because even if I get given one, I do want one of those in the graveyard for Darius plays later on. And we have Laquari as the other option here. Uh, Kip just choose Laquari to go into hand, so the two Bestiaris go graveyard, as well as my remaining rescue cats. So, seems pretty good, right? We have Naturia Beast out turn 1 that stops all the change of heart and uh, Pot of Greed type shenanigans that could get brought in. Uh, I do set the War Chariot anyway because I want to make it at least look as if I might have Mirror Force or something. And you can see Kib's opening hand here is really kind of shut down by having Naturia Beast. So, yeah. Um, so this open, uh, this hand here, like I could have maybe put Nigeria Beast to defense, but Light Swans have got a lot of uh, like six targets basically that can get over it in defense, and Aaron kind of shuffles it away. So I didn't really want to do that, but I also didn't want to walk into a Mirror Force by normal summoning something. So we had, I had a little bit of a debate for a sec here. It's like ah, I really want to summon something, but if Mirror Force comes in, I get like ultra mega punished for it. So I'm. I ultimately decide to just go into battle phase here. Uh, that's why, again, we're going to need to next play a few times and stuff that way. Do walk into the Mirror Force, so Naturia Beast does go. It unfortunately didn't get to do a whole lot, but that is fine. Main 2, I can just normal summon Laquari, and I have War Chariot down, so it's a pretty reasonable situation right now. So that's fun. Uh, for turn, not a lot has been drawn here, but there is a Graganith in hand, and there is a Brain Control to play, so uh, pay the 800, take control of the quarry, and tribute it for Graganith is pretty reasonable. Uh, I personally would have solo recharged first, but if you've got the play in mind in hand already, then it's not really that big of a deal, you know? So, Graganith comes in, uh, solo recharge will now come down, it will discard the wolf out of hand, because it can't be summoned by regular normal summons and whatnot. Uh, it's funny because I traded Kib this card for Night End Sorcerer and I think neither of us really got a good deal out of that in the end. Because <laughs> the Sorcerer is just bad for uh, because it's played in the Fortune Lady stuff right now. And Wolf just breaks his hand all the time. I don't know. So he draws into two pretty good cards to be honest. Eren and Honest is a really good one to have in hand. And then unfortunately discarding Duster and uh, Charge of the Light Brigade here. Um, Charge is the new addition to the deck, which is actually a promo that we can trade for too. It's, uh, I believe it was a special edition card, so it's a bit cheaper to get now. Anyway, he sinks in 2300 because he did discard a Light Swan for the effect of Solar Recharge, and 
Mills three at the end of the turn. Wild Tornado is an interesting tech that we're going to see a little bit come uh, later on with stuff here. Uh, so, yeah, that would be fun. So, I don't really have a lot to do with this hand. I kind of just need to Regeki. It's an unfortunate situation. I really don't like regeki in for one, but I don't exactly have a lot I can do. I'm going to normal summon the Mermillo because this thing is just like the wolf in Kip's hand. This thing just keeps coming into my hand and I don't really want it there. So, we're going to swing for the 800. We're going to tag this back into the deck. Uh, I could have done more damage putting something else in, but I do like having the I, the option of Mermillo's uh, destruction effect later on, and that can definitely come in handy. So, I'm going to bring something else out. I don't actually think it matters too much as far as recovery of cards here. I mean, Darius is a pretty good one, mind you, because Darius can special summon something out of the grave. So, it uh, gives me a bit more field presence. It's not really too bad here. So that's fine. Get ourselves the quarry out. Means if nothing gets disrupted next turn, somehow I would have Heraclinos possible. I don't know how that would honestly happen here, but it, it is a thing. Uh, top deck Jane for turn is pretty strong here, actually. Uh, thinking on it, if you destroyed the Darius with Jane here, you or anyone really, you would be able to shuffle the quarry back into the deck. But. I can totally understand why that wouldn't be the first uh, first sort of play here. We do go into the quarry. We have a bit of a debate here as to whether or not I could chariot this. I was trying to look stuff up, couldn't find it in a reasonable enough time frame, but I can tell now it actually isn't something that I could have done. Jane's effect, despite being worded almost as if it would be like a trigger when she attacks, it actually is a continuous effect, it's just there all the time. You cannot War Chariot against a continuous effect. So, luckily, I we played I played this player as going, well, I don't really want to do it if it's, uh, it might mess things up. Because I'm not confident enough in the ruling at the time to do it. So we don't actually end up uh, using War Chariot here. So this game is not tainted by that, thankfully. So let us move on. I do take the 300 and Laquari goes to the grave. And that's a pretty good, pretty good opportunity for me. So uh, there is a monster in the grave, obviously, uh, from that. But I have plenty of other glads, so it's fine. And then when Jane goes to mill, because I still have Darius in play and that wasn't shuffled away by... Oh, yeah, Lucari wasn't shuffled away because Darius left the field. Um, I can chariot to stop the mill effect from happening and destroy Jane that way. So that's pretty helpful because my hand was not going anywhere when it came to that. Top deck of Test Tiger would have been pretty good though. So I would have been able to get out of that situation even if I didn't still have Darius. But then again, Laquari would have been shuffled. So who knows what my deck would have had. Um, so here, it looks like a pretty open and shut case, right? To normal summon the dude, bring out Test Tiger, maybe shuffle in something, and get a whole ton of damage off here. My play wasn't really going down that line. I do special summon the Test Tiger, and that's pretty good, right? Because I do still keep my normal summon. We contribute the Test Tiger, and I actually have Sekutor in the deck. So the idea here, my thought at least, was that, okay, I will tag the Darius out into Sekitor, because Laquari went into the graveyard, I can then bring Darius and a quest in as the, the main options here. I could have normal summoned, like, Sand Knight, and, or even a quest here, and tagged that out as well. But I decided not to, because my goal here is Heraclinos. And I didn't know of anything about Kib's hand. I wanted to make sure that I didn't fall foul of like double spell proc or something to to bait Hera and then like change of heart or something like that coming in. So I just hit with a 400 with Sekitor. Sekitor does not tag out, it summons more beasts from the deck. So we get both Horse 1 and Horse 2 as I call them. We get Darius and a quest. Darius can special summon the Laquari from the graveyard and a quest will get the War Chariot back. So now we're going to have, in main 2, we're going to tag out Sekitor, a quest, and the, the quarry, and go into Heraclinos with two cards in hand and a war chariot face down. 
And that's kind of absurd, to be honest. That is one heck of a heck of a setup to deal with. Because with two negates of spell traps, plus an effect monster negation down, like this is really difficult to deal with with most boards, right? Because even something like Honest, I can use War Chariot against Honest. So that isn't even a surefire win here either. But Kib's hand is actually pretty well suited for it. Um, he has three Light Sworn monsters with different names in the graveyard right now. So he actually stumbles on, no, not even stumbles, he thinks up the, the ideal plan to go in with here. Um, he normal summons Eren and goes in to attack the Heraclinos because he has Honest in hand, right? So it discards the Honest in damage step, but I can activate War Chariot to negate the effect of Honest. So Eren is still going to go down. He's going to take the 1400. It takes a little bit, but we we get the 1400 out. But now he has exactly four Light Sworn names in the grave, and my War Chariot has been used up. So... In comes the boy himself, uh, Judgment Dragon comes down, because uh, yeah, we're at that exact point now, and now JD can burn a thousand life points and blow my entire board up, and I have no response to this. Nothing in hand will save me from that. Luckily, I didn't summon last turn, because I would have lost even more to this, um, like I did normal summon. I would have been well out of luck with this if I did that, so thankfully that's not what happens here. Uh, so yeah, he takes the 14 and then the 1,000, so down at the correct life point count here, and I have nothing in hand whatsoever here. So, yeah, not entirely sure, considering I've already gone through Regeki as well. Not really sure how we're getting out of this one right now, but uh, gonna have to find a way, right? Uh, Book of Moon would be pretty good, because Book would actually help. He is gonna upstart Goblin first as well, that's, uh, that's also pretty fair. Uh, draw Shire, which is quite nice. Uh, she doesn't start very strong, but given how many different Light Sworn names get played, uh, it's not bad. Yeah, so Book of Moon would probably help because I could tag out into Mamillo. That's a lot of painful uh, discards there too, like Pot of Greed, Mirror Force, kinda yucky. Drawing Chariot for turn is good, but very telegraphed. It's like, okay, I've got to just summon something and set the Chariot down. If Kib activates Judgment Dragon, I can Chariot and the gate destroy the Dragon. But he could just attack first. But here's the thing, this is kind of a 50-50 for him, right? I haven't played my own Mirror Force yet, and I haven't played stuff. I mean, I could just book a moon or something here, I guess, as well. But, like, I haven't played Mirror Force. So, if he doesn't activate Judgment Dragon, then he could just be walking into Mirror Force or walking into, like, Kunai with Chain or something that would stop this. But if he does activate it, he walks into Chariot. It's a telegraph play but it's like the best thing I could really do with it and uh, yeah that's what it comes down to but he still has Shire which because there are four light swans in the graveyard at the moment with different names still it is still four right yep no five because Lila got milled too so this is actually strong enough at this point it is uh, yeah way too way too big for this stuff is it five or is it six should be one, two, three, four, five. So she should be at 19. I think I took too much damage there. Uh, it doesn't really matter in the long run, but that's fine. Um, we missed the mill of the Light Swan Saber here. That would have equipped to Shire and given her 700, but I top deck the Dark Hole, so it doesn't actually matter in the long run. So that's fine. My last card in hand is the Equest. Again, if I normal summoned the same turn I got Heraclinos at, I'd have had nothing here. So we hit for the 1600. And I'm looking in the graveyard to see, okay, what would I go into if I tagged out? Um, Darius was the fairly obvious pick here. Uh, what I was actually checking, and I think Kib actually suggested this to me in the end, that's uh, what I was actually checking is, uh, can you get Heraclinos back here? The answer is yes. Obviously, you can't negate anything with, with the effect at that point, because Darius will negate the effect of the God Beast that it summons. But... Uh, you can actually bring back Heraclinus because it's a must first to be special summoned on it. It's not a uh, cannot be summoned except by type thing. It's it's a semi nomi as we call it. So that's actually a pretty good point. It's like yeah okay I guess probably the best bet then is to bring out Darius from the tag out here and actually go into Heraclinus. 
uh, which seems like a bit of a weird thing to do in a way, like when you just look at it out, you know, normally it's like, well, now you can't activate this effect, whatever. It's still a 3,000 attack monster. It matches stuff like JD, although JD would still work because darkness is a thing, but yeah. Um, it's kind of insane to, to think about it. It's like, I can just special summon a 3,000 attack monster, because why not? So, after a bit of deliberation, I guess we will just get through that, uh, hopefully. Go next. Yeah, there's a couple of shuffles and stuff here, because like, I want to just double check that we're doing that I'm going to do it right. So we're just going to go ahead and skip through. We do actually get the Darius, and the Darius is going to take the Heraclinus out here. My initial thought was that, okay, maybe if I go Darius into Bestiari, I could put Geysaris on the board, and Geysaris doesn't have to blow anything up at that point, but it's just like, it's bigger than most of the stuff that could get summoned, and is a bit less vulnerable to, to stuff here. But, this is the play that we go for, and a top deck Jane is a pretty good way of outing that. Um, because, yeah, Jane gets over Darius, and... Kid was thinking at the moment, it's like, oh, this is over at this point because I can't get over Heraclinos. And then I reminded him, no, actually, if you kill the Darius, um, you will put Heraclinos back into the extra. So this actually isn't over at this point. So that's exactly what happens. We get the 400 damage for 2100 attack Jane, when, you know, because she's attacking, she does get the run over. And then Heraclinos goes back into the extra deck. So. That does mean it's potentially available later on as well, but yeah. Um, Snatch Steel on a second charge going there is uh, is kind of rough, but uh, Snatch Steel especially is is the awkward one. This is the thing about Light Swans, like milling, self-milling can be really bad sometimes of it. I do get Hoplimus here, which is a really good top deck to be honest. Um, Jane can't run over it because it's 2100. We know that Honest has been used, so there's no way that's going to factor in here. Um, Kiv sets the Rinyan instead of like normal summoning Garoth here is interesting. I can see why, because you want to get some recovery going at this stage. Um, but yeah, so the, the we clash 2100 attack, this one 100 defense. Since I see there's no other face up monster out here, Mermillo is the obvious thing to, to go into to get rid of the Jane. It's quite nice to be able to tag that out later on, uh, earlier on even. And oh, what a top deck for the turn, Graceful Charity, on an empty hand, this is such a huge risk to play, but uh, Desperate Time Score for Desperate Measures, so we're going to draw in. It's a fairly simplified board state, there's not a lot of Spell Trap stuff going around, so if I have to get rid of something that way, it's fine. Uh, these are three pretty okay cards, to be honest, Secutor is an easy enough discard, Duster doesn't really do anything in this situation, I've seen it hasn't been playing Spell Traps as much right now, because he keeps milling them. So, I felt pretty okay with that. We do have a Chariot in play now as well. And it's like, okay, I just want to tag this dude out. I don't care what happens. I can Geysaris if I need to. But it's actually Rinyan. Uh, if that was Raikou, that could have been a little bit scary, actually. But I think uh, there was only one Raikou left. He's got two in total. So, one of them, I think, was already in the grave. So, it's like, barely okay with it. And I just wanted to try and tag out, to be honest. Even if it was Jane or, some, or Genis, even. Something bigger than... Uh, what I could play here. I just needed to sag out. We do get Shire back into the deck. So that could potentially be a threat later on. There's probably like seven or eight different Light Swans in the grave right now. So that's scary. Does get a card draw as well. And we get to tag out at the end of the battle phase here into probably Darius, I think. Um, or actually, it would be Darius, but I think they're both in the graveyard. They are both in the graveyard. I only play two. Uh, that was that was pretty much my observation at the time as well. I think I was like, oh no, they are both in graves. So uh, I think I actually go into a quest to get the uh, Darius back into hand here, which is still pretty good, right? I'm still getting uh, plus one off of that, and putting Darius back in circulation is quite nice. So we're just gonna skip ahead a little bit here. I think we're doing a bit of bit of graveyard viewing for. Of stuff there, so we tag out. Yep, yeah, do get the quest in, so that should be getting Darius back into hand, if I remember my plays correctly here. That is the case. Yep, yeah, because we need to have this thing back out, because it's the way that we get the explosive fusion plays. So definitely got to do that. In the main two, we can still set the chariot, and this is a relatively, relatively decent position, right? I haven't normal summoned this turn either, so. 
that's another good thing about this is I can just summon the Darius down and get uh, get a second threat out on the board. So two monsters plus chariot seems like a decent spot, right? So let's see the response. And here's kind of the interesting bit with it because Kib didn't summon Garoth earlier. Garoth is now a play to go through stuff. I think Darius probably should have been the uh, the attack target here, in my humble opinion, because that might have uh, shut down some plays later on, but I can totally see why you would want to uh, kill the quest here. Yeah, spoilers, that's what's going to be the attack target. We'll just uh, build someone through that. So I take 250, a quest goes into the grave. I'm pretty sure I still have the other one in, uh, in deck at the moment. I do play two of them. So I think we're still fine on that front. Top deck Book of Moon is pretty much the dream play here. This is as much as I could have wanted off it. Um, so long as that face down isn't exactly Mirror Force, because Kib does have two of them, uh, but they're both in the grave. I did spot this at this point, so I was like, yeah, no. Uh, you don't have access to Mirror Force at this stage, so I'm pretty sure I'm safe to attack. So we book it, go into battle phase, knock it out with Darius, and Darius can tag back out, and that's very important because now I can tag back into it and get the uh, the special summon effect later on and pull out some, some good stuff with it. So very, very big that we managed to get it out that way. Um, kind of too bad there's not a glad beast that just like draws a card when it's summoned or something. That would have been fun. Uh, <laughs> it would have been good advantage right now. Uh, so I forget what I actually tag into here. Um, by the way, Kib's been sitting on a thousand life points for quite a while here. This is uh, very good defense being played with it here. I mean, this is this is showing the strength of the Light Swans, though. They do have a lot of inherent attack power that can be a bit difficult for Glads to run over consistently, especially on these simplified board states. You know, got to end up playing stuff like Book of Moon in uh, somewhat silly ways. Well, not even silly, just like you've got to kind of proactively do it. So, okay, yeah, so we do go into the second copy of a quest that will get another card back from the graveyard into the hand. Um, I think here is where I actually go. I haven't normal summoned yet this turn. So let's bring out Bestiari from the graveyard. Right back on turn one, we had painful choice, get rid of two Bestiari. So this is a good chance to bring that out. And so that's what we do. And we go main two because we're end of battle phase is when you tag out, obviously. So we go into main phase two here, and I can normal summon the bestiari, and I can tag out into Geysaurus with a basically contact fusion. This shuffle these two back into the deck, and we will have ourselves the uh, the big monster that was the reason Bestiari got limited at the time. Geysaurus will destroy up to two cards when it is special summoned. So we will pop the back row and dun dun dun, it is Wild Tornado and I'm like, oh no because when this gets destroyed whilst it's set, it actually can target and destroy, it has to uh, target and destroy a face-up card on the field. So I'm like, oh god, I just consolidated into something that just got destroyed and my face down this chariot that doesn't do anything right now. So uh, this turned around pretty quickly. <laughs> it's a pretty bad spot to, to find myself in. I did not expect to see like a second wild tornado here. I saw the one and I was like, ah, it's probably just the only ones getting played then. Uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't see a second one coming. So kind of my bad. I uh, wasn't really anticipating that, but it's fine. So top deck Lumina for turn is really good here. Um, Kib's still worried about Mirror Force, so he's gonna just hit in for the thousand first. I completely appreciate uh, the fear off of that, honestly, respect it. Um, so I take the thousand, and then main two, we are going to discard the uh, other Rinyan, I think it's in hand, and special summon Wolf. The irony of putting Shire back into the deck with the other Rinyan here, Shire would have been a really good summon, right? But, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, you've kind of just got to play to the outs and I mean hey a normal summon Shire later on could still be pretty bat breaking but Wolf is still good too 2100 is strong and yeah that's gonna be hard to out right now so let's see what we can do about it we're on the top deck so but I have and also mill three painful choice getting milled is actually totally perfect here because you can't really play painful choice at this situation so uh, 
that's fine. Um, also, not milling JD and not milling Shire. So, luckily for me, I mean, this is the thing about Glad Beasts shuffling themselves back into the deck so often, right? I top deck the Laquari. It's not lethal, puts it down to 200, though. And we can tag out, and I think this is... Darius is actually the play. Initially, Mermillo was what I was going to have, but I have two copies of Geysaris. I actually did pull two of them when we did Light of Destruction. So, I can go Darius. The second best Diari that was in the graveyard is summonable with Darius. This is why it was so important to get this thing back in circulation, right? And now I can tag out again and go into my second copy of Geysaris and pop the uh, Wolf here. And this, instead of going Mermillo for this, this now gives me a 2400 body on the board. Much, much better than if I was uh, relying on Mermillo here. So yeah, it's pretty strong. Raikou's set is quite nice though. It, it like In general, it's a pretty good card to have around. Uh, Book of Moon top deck doesn't really do a lot here. I just go straight into battle. We do walk into the Raikou, but you can activate. War Chariot in uh, Damage Step, which is uh, it's actually kind of fun. There's a, the specific ruling is on Manny the Bug, but like it's the same idea here. Well, um, it's a flip effect. You can trigger it against it, so we're just going to fizzle the uh, the Raikou here. And because Geysaurus has battled, I can tag it out. Um, so that's what we're going to do in the end of the battle phase here. We tag it out. We get two Glad Beasts into play which is going to be Horse 1 and Horse 2, if I remember rightly. Oh, no, wait, no. Do I have a Laquari in the grave? I don't remember. Um, I do not, so I actually need to get Laquari with one of these, because Heraclinos is coming back out. Yeah, that one copy of Heraclinos that I have that got shuffled back into the extra, it comes out again now. So, yeah, I, I was looking, and it's like, yeah, I need to get Laquari with one of these, so Darius is just going to have to pick up something. The quest is a decent recovery option. I didn't want to, like, top deck Sekitor or something later on, so we're not going to bother with that. Then we tag all of these back out into the Heraclinos. It's an empty board here. I didn't really keep enough track of whether all the stealing cards had gone, but I was like, okay, if there's any spell card that could stop this, I would want... Like, Monster Reborn would probably uh, do something here, right? I was like, I don't want that. So I keep the Book of Moon in hand. And... Wouldn't you know it, that was probably not the play, but we'll see. Uh, so, Judgment Dragon comes out, second copy. This is where actually having two of them matters. But it can't use its effect because there's nothing, uh, there's not enough life points for it. So, that's fine. It could crash, and that would be okay. But Kib's got a better idea. He actually tributes it for Dragonif. And we do a little bit of counting here, and it's like, oh, bugger. <laughs> because he has one, two, three, four, five... Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different Light Sworn monsters in the graveyard right now. This dude is sitting at 5,000 attack. And I have nothing in play that could defend me here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> How on earth do I beat a 5,000 attack piercing monster in, uh, in this situation? He has five cards left in deck too, so even if he mills himself down to two at the end of the turn, but that's still, with the piercing, that's still enough to survive a couple of shots here. So battle phase, he goes in, I take 2,000 damage off of this, and uh, things are looking real bad. Uh, <laughs> I've gone through Dark Hole, I've gone through Regeki. There are very few resources I could actually draw that would get me out of this, I think. And a lot of the a lot of my deck is the monsters that I keep shuffling back. So it's not even as if it's uh, as if I've been like deck thinning the entire time just to get through to all of my best spell and trap and such. I I mean there is Miraforce as a potential option. Duster has been gone like the wild tornadoes have gone, so um, that's always a play. We do see Monster Reborn, Lumina, and Dark Resonator gone. That means Shire is one of the last two cards in the deck as well. A top deck Shire would get it here, and Dust Tornado is not the out. Oh no. If Shire got summoned at this point, it would have in the region of like 24... No, more than that. It'd have like 3400 attack. 
Luckily for me, the second Raikou is the thing that gets uh, top decked here. So, we get one shot. Because he can go into battle phase, and I need to Book of Moon. And then we have one, one draw. One draw to seal it all here. Um, if I don't get exactly Mirror Force, or probably... No, even Mirror Force might not do it at this point, because Raikou being set... Uh, Kib might well have been able to target the back row that I would have set there uh, the next turn because he probably would have, well maybe not because we didn't see the activation of the dust tornado so like maybe he would, maybe that wouldn't have been it but it still would have been like a 50-50 at that point. So we have Raikou set, this is very scary because if I just hit into Raikou then I die as well. Um, Dragonif also gains defense, so it has like 4600 defense at this point as well, or somewhere in that region. But Heart of the Cards, guiding us in here, gets the Monster Reborn, I double check stuff a little bit. Geysaris works when it is special summon, not when it is special summoned from the fusion, uh, from like the extra deck. Like it, um, it does not have to be contacted for. So we Monster Reborn, I can pick up, because I can't pick up Judgment Dragon because that's a actual Nomi monster, cannot be special summoned except by. Heraklinos doesn't do anything here because it's not big enough, so we do get the Geysaris. Yeah, must first be special summoned, and then when it is special summoned, target up to two cards on the field, destroy those targets, so we can get the Geysaris out, pop the two monsters. Raikou doesn't flip because it gets destroyed while face down, so it doesn't get to revenge kill the Geysaris here, and we can swing in and attack for game. This game took like probably 45 minutes to do or something, it was just absolutely ludicrous to play. And that was only game one. <laughs> uh, considering how much of a whitewash so many of the Glad Beast games have been, it was really, really refreshing to see this sort of back and forth often and going, oh man, we were both running on basically empty at that point. It was just completely wild. So game two, uh, we do actually, we do a little bit of siding, it, it takes a bit, so we'll skip through that. Game two, I made to go first again, and wouldn't you know it, I mean, you play three copies of a card, you hope to see it in the opening hand. I do actually have the rescue cat in my opening again here. Uh, Kib's opening doesn't seem particularly strong against this. It's not the worst thing I've seen ever, but it's uh, definitely, like, Solar Recharge was kind of being relied on a bit there. So getting the Churia Beast out turn one again is uh, pretty powerful here. So, yep, we're gonna bring it out, we're gonna set the Book of Moon, it's a bit better than Chariot this time around, I think, because I actually have some defense against a uh, stronger attack. And yeah, Kib's just gonna have to set Raikou, set Tornado, and pass, like Change of Heart is in hand with it. We do draw into one of my side deck cards, my body is a shield. Yeah, I actually have to side some cards in this time, it's in, instead of just the engine working as intended, it's kind of wild. Uh, doesn't usually happen in the end, but that's fine. So we get the Darius in play. I was thinking, yeah, if you Mirror Force, I have my body, so I'm pretty okay to, to just go in here. So Naturia Beast is going to get the attack, and it turns out to be Raikou. Now, there was a little bit, I was a little bit slow in sending the thing to the graveyard here, because I was like, ah, do, do I have anything to respond to this? The answer is no. My body is a shield because Raikou doesn't actually target. Um, Raikou would not, I mean I couldn't play my body anyway because it was damage step, but like there really just wasn't anything I could do, I just wanted to double check all the wounds and such. So it's like, yeah, alright, we're, we're fine with that. Um, Darius does hit in for 17, it does not get mirror forced, so we're going to go into the Bestiari here, the second copy that's in the deck, to pop the back row. Didn't mention as well that Kib did mill uh, Snatch Deal um, and Lila here as well, actually, is kind of a nice one. But mill milling Snatch Deal is always good for me, obviously. So we go Bestiari, we pop the back row. The back row is Wild Tornado. I was like, uh, yeah, that's destroying a monster, so, and it's not damage step anymore, so I'm going to chain my body as a shield. So we pay the 1500 and I keep my monster, because I kind of want to keep Bestiari in play right now. Not going to lie. Um, keeping a monster is always, always what you want on the field, right? So it's like, yeah, I kind of I kind of need that right now. So we're just going with that. Uh, for turn, top decking Jane is pretty strong. Uh, it's a good monster. Gets over gets over what we have here. Um, prevents setting Honest or something like that. 
Uh, Solar Recharge is the better first play though, once again discard the wolf out of hand, you can't do anything with it in hand, so yep, it's good to go with that. I give him the go ahead, he does draw the two and mill two here as well. Card Destruction Upstart Goblin is interesting, Giant Trap Hole is a tech from the side deck as well, and unfortunately Pot of Greed going too, this is the, the bad downside of uh, Light Swan, right? They keep milling all the good cards, because you don't play bad cards for this, right? I mean, maybe Wolf, but... Uh, even then. Wolf is Wolf is still good if you don't keep drawing it in your opening hand. Um, yeah, they don't really play bad cards, so you're milling all of the good stuff out the deck as you as you go, and if you don't like mill your light swans down or something and just keep milling all your spell traps, it's very awkward. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. So we get our Star Goblin here as well. I do gain most of the life points I pay for my body back, which is nice. Mirror of Oaths is another great card from the side deck to, to draw here. Uh, that's very strong for keeping advantage up. So see how that ends up going. Um, so I think the obvious play here, you need to normal summon Jane. You've not got a better target in hand. I don't think you go for change of heart in this sort of situation because there's not really a need to and card destruction you definitely don't want to do that when you have honest book of moon however is going to stop this uh, jane does not have enough defense to go over the um bestiari so we are still finding that front black horn of heaven is my other side deck tech here because it stops judgment dragon when it gets summoned so uh I don't want to take any chances here, I don't want to run into Mirror Force with two card, uh, two monsters, so we just go straight in with Bestiari, tag it out, and go into Laquari here, because I can't tag out into Bestiari itself, even if I had the second one in deck, which I don't, but yeah, you can't tag out into the same monster, so there's no popping in the back row, I've got nothing in the grave right now that I can actually use with... Uh, a quest or Darius or something, so I might as well just go to Quarry, get the 2100, but Kip flips the Mirror of Oaths, that will destroy this dude, and he draws a card for it too, very very strong uh, play there. So then I'm just like, well, I guess I'm setting hip uh, hip a dip -a -doo. and uh, Black Horn of Heaven, and well there's the Mirror Force one turn too late, but uh, yeah, a uh, bit, bit of a compromise spot, I mean, Hoplomus is really good, but Honest could actually let something run over it. Like, Jane or, Jane or Gareth would run it. Aaron, which we know that Kib has one of, would shuffle it back into the deck, so it's not a particularly great position to be in. Luckily, none of that comes in, though. Raikou is the only possible play with it here. And so I get a pretty reasonable shot here. Bestiari being the last card I have this way. I do initially, like, click battle phase, but I didn't actually start attacking. And I was like, oh, I really shouldn't have been doing this. Kib being the sport that he is does let me roll it back. Um, because we haven't made it haven't made a decision yet as uh, as his words were last night so we do roll it back because I Geysaurus is the obvious play here since I didn't get torrential tributed it's like okay we'll uh, we'll do this I didn't actually have to flip summon this guy I wasn't aware at the time that you could just reveal that it's a glad beast and then tag out that way so that was riskier than it should have been but it's fine I just didn't know at the time so yeah we'll tag these out and we get Geysaurus, which will pop both of the two cards that are in play right now. Very strong, as you uh, can appreciate. So that gets rid of, once again, gets rid of Raikou before it flips. It's a disadvantage of it being a flip monster, I suppose. And getting rid of Mirror Force is really good here. So now we can go battle phase. We can hit for 2400 and tag out to two Gladiator Beast monsters at the end of the battle phase. Which, because Laquari got destroyed by Mirror of Oaths, Darius is now alive, so we can take the quarry out, and also, I don't think it actually matters what the other monster is at this point, because I only have the one card in the grave that I can use with it, so the quarry is the one that I need, so we'll just tag out to Darius plus something. I think I end up just getting a quest or whatever. Uh, it really doesn't matter what uh, what comes out. Oh, it's Sam Knight, whatever. Couldn't remember what I picked up, really does not make any difference here, because all three of these are getting tagged out into Heraclinos anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's kind of just the situation that we're in right now, is just shuffle them all up, Heraclinos is a pretty strong card, so we'll uh, 
will sit on that 3000 and I do have Black Horn of Heaven down in case Judgment Dragon tries to ruin the day. Uh, I actually don't remember, can he even summon JD right now? Yeah, because there's like five, five, six different names, there's five different names in there. So Judgment Dragon would have been a big problem, but uh, Horn of Heaven, Black Horn of Heaven stops that. Lumina top deck is really good, mind you. Knowing that Honest, now when, when we can see it, knowing that Honest is in hand, Lumina top deck is super good here. Discards the card destruction that you can't really play and wouldn't want to play here anyway. And you can special summon a dude from the, the grave here. I cannot Black Horn of Heaven this because it is an activated effect that is special summoning. Black Horn of Heaven can only negate inherent special summons like Cyber Dragon, Judgment Dragon, Synchro Summoning, etc, etc. Um, so I can't actually stop this, even if I wanted to. That's what um, Solemn Warning coming in the next set would be able to do that, but that's not what we have to play with. So yeah, this is this is the life that we live. Black Horn of Heaven is good, but it's not that good. So we're just mulling over what to pick up here uh, because I think Lila was the other consideration because Lila would have allowed Kib to pop the back row um, it would have Goblin attack forced itself, uh, so you know couldn't use it for a couple of turns. But given that Honest is in hand, it's like you've got um, Lumina can still attack over Heraclinos. But in the end, Wolf is the one that's picked because it is the more aggressive option here. Um, I think it was just worried about Mirror Force, which is a fair worry. Um, I might have actually been tempted to take the Lila, field control and whatnot. But yeah, he goes for the goes for the wolf, discards the honest. I don't have the war chariot, so I do have to just tank this. Uh, 2100, because it's the attack of wolf, uh, honest gives 3000 for the turn. And we take the thousand as well here. So, end phase, what can we do? Again, this hand is compromised a little bit here. We do get a tri the triple mill off a of, lot uh, uh, Lumina as well. Any Shire in the graveyard would actually be really good if Lumina stayed alive. Once again, top deck in the Monster Reborn here. This card has been super clutch. Um, so we could get Heraclinos back and wrap this up, right? Well, actually, my thought process at the time, we, I went over this as we were going, it's like, if I get Heraclinos back with the one card that I have in hand, I can't lethal with it, right? So if I get Heraclinos back, and he has, like, change of heart, or uh, like a control spell, snatch deal or something, and top decks a spell for turn, I can't negate both. And that would be really, really bad for me here. As, like, I've seen in the graveyard... Oh, sorry for that. I've been trying to avoid doing that, but I've seen in the graveyard, it's like, okay, one Mirror Force is already gone, the Wild Tornadoes are gone, chances are there's not going to be a destruction effect coming in from traps. So I don't think I need to negate the trap cards here. What I think I need to do are Honest Gone as well. I need to be able to negate multiple spells. So I actually take Naturia Beast even though it's the weaker monster here. Because it's strong enough to deal with what's on the board. And Battle Phase I do hit over the Luminous so that there's no more special summons. Especially seeing Shia went to the graveyard. Um, special summoning would be super bad for me here. So I do run over the, the Lumina and set on that. I mean, I've still got Black Horn of Heaven in case JD comes in, um, and I can just negate spells at this point. Kid does draw Harpy's Feather Duster for turn, so seems I was uh, was validated in the play. I was like, I think he's holding on to a Steel card. So let me get the best Yari in play, and with my last card in hand being Regeki, we can just Geki this down and attack for lethal. Absolutely ludicrous game, to be honest. This this was one hell of a setup. Uh, we just go over some showing cards and stuff. We we mill through the decks because we do this at the end of every game, right? We mill through the decks and we show show each other what we were playing. So not a lot to go with there. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this as much as we did. What a tussle that first game was, though. Like this <laughs> this does show that the glad beasts are not infallible. They are. Definitely, I mean, I had to get some very good Heart of the Cards moments to uh, to win out on that one. Um, yeah, this this deck is not infallible, but it, it is very, very difficult to beat. I Kudos to Kib with that. Uh, we might end up going with 2JD as a playable thing after this. I, I think we should probably do stuff against different decks as well, since I'm not actually going to be playing... Uh, 
glad beasts as much at the moment. Like, I'll probably tweak this in the background and then bring it back if I need to, but, uh, or want to, I should say. But just now, like, I really have so many other decks that I want to play that I don't necessarily want to stick to glads every time. But we needed to do this, I think. We needed to go with, like, the absolute strongest decks that we have available and see what, uh, what sticks off it. And this was one hell of a set. So, like I say, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, this was entertaining for you guys as well. Um, yeah, this is some of what has been happening when we're testing stuff to get the trade stuff. If you didn't see the update from last time, then uh, go check my last video out as well. And you'll be able to, to see why we haven't had main draft stuff for a little bit. Alright, take care everyone.